Hi, and welcome to Creatives on Speed, where we talk to creative thinkers, doers, and makers from all walks of life about their work and their inspirations. And I'm delighted to be joined today by Hattie Ashdown, who's a comedian, writer, and broadcaster. Hello, Hattie. Hello, Joe. Thanks for having me. <laughs> I'm really excited to talk to you. We, we've obviously, we worked together on a fit, short film a few years ago, which I was really excited to have you be part of that. But talk to us a bit more about all the things you do um, and um, what you get up to. Oh, gosh. Um, well, yeah, I'm one of those annoying people that if I, if you still gave out, gave out little cards, it would be like, you know, broadcaster, presenter, and it's like, ah! too much just narrow it down know your brand um <laughs> i still don't really know it but i guess comedian sort of sums it all up doesn't it really but uh, i do stand up and i have uh so on and off for the last 10 15 years and i am a presenter i've worked in radio for about the same amount of time 10 15 years i have a podcast now which also goes out on soho radio and i do act of course i acted in your film um but not so much of that on and off what else do i do i feel like something else writer you, of course, writer, of course. You, <laughs> yeah you wrote a really great sitcom which tell us a bit more about that uh, so I wrote a sitcom which came about through being an, an out of work actress, really. Um, when I came out of uni, uh, I studied theatre and I didn't know what I wanted to do. So I wasn't sure if I really wanted to be an actress, but like everyone, I just followed the sort of um, working, you know, like doing promo work where you just give out free stuff to people um, that they don't really know they need and so I did that on and off and it was good for auditions and stuff like that so and yeah when I was doing that I just thought there's got to be something here and I think it was also a way of getting through it like so I'd something some awful customer would come along who was just really rude and that was the only way you could get through it was like for me write it like write down that I think it's sort of yeah it's a way of coping in a way isn't it I hadn't hadn't really started stand up then but um yeah so Cut a long, very, very long story because it, it took a long time to get commissioned, which I know that's the normal, but um, apparently we were particularly long time. And I think that's because um, me and Tony McMurray, who, who wrote it together, um, were relatively unknown. And so that's it does take a long time. Um, so it was about the promo world. Um, originally, it was going to be called Promo Girls, but that, that, that doesn't really tell anyone anything. And so we called it Give Out Girls. And because it is a very sexist world, it is mainly women. <laughs> um, if you're a guy, then you just get promoted to event manager just for being a guy straight away. <laughs> and so I just wanted, yeah, so I was very lucky to meet Robert Popper. Um, it literally was luck. I know people say that, but he was a friend of my boyfriend at the time. And I just, you know, I was, was a bit sassy those days and I was like hey I've got an idea and he I, I think you know he liked it and he and this is my advice to people also he liked me that sounds so awful but I think no it's true it's about relationships you've yeah. got to like the people you're going to work with because it's pretty intense these things right yeah and I was a bit of I still am love my 40s and I was a bit more um, glamorous then and <laughs> sort of um I think he liked all that and he came to see my show in Edinburgh, which I did a one woman show called Nan Child. And yeah, you just keep talking, don't you? Just keep talking. And uh, I think one day he invited me to some swanky private members club. And there I was, was like literally my pro promo uniform was in my backpack. And I'm just, yeah, that was it. And then he took it to, he took it to places. And yeah. so. And those who don't know Robert, he was, in, he's been involved in lots of, like comedy shows like peep show and that sort of yeah. stuff isn't he and obviously his own one friday night dinner yeah which of course ridiculously successful yeah, let's go back to when you were growing up and and like some of those creative like influences and things you were doing what was what sort of creative activities were you doing when you were growing up i didn't come from a particularly creative background um in, in a performance in a performing or writing 
way but my family different members are quite show-offs I guess and my sister uh, used to belong to Amdram and so I started doing that and I, I wanted to be I wanted to be like her I still look up to her I still think she's the funniest person in the world and so I guess that was the first time that but then being told oh that's something you could actually do for a living because I just always saw it as a hobby I guess we always sort of like yeah dressed up a bit at home um well my sisters are really loud (laughs) um but my mum isn't she was like our audience and I guess yeah yeah when I was little I used to put on you know all the put on a little play and all that sort of thing make them buy tickets just my mum and her friends and force her daughter you know like when you're forced to be friends because your mum's friends and all that yeah I'd force her to do this Hansel and Gretel recital and <laughs> brilliant um so I look so bossy um but not being bossy just just being organized yes exactly assertive and then and then went to school and yeah I went to school well done me and <laughs> The cliche, like I never really felt like, uh, I later found out I was dyslexic and I never really felt like I was good at anything. And then uh, the classic, you know, sort of auditions for the this play. And then, and then the, I had a teacher who used to write stuff, which is now I realise is quite cool. He'd write, so he wrote his own play uh, for the school and um, he sort of put me and this other girl as the leading role, so... Yeah, I never really thought about it before. That was written for me. Isn't that cool? Um, but I loved that. I remember <laughs> I remember coming off and all like the younger kids like coming up and going, oh, you're really good. You're really good. And like thinking, oh, I quite like that feeling. Yeah, that stuck. <laughs> oh, no. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. I've always got into this, you know, the same with, with writing the characters for Give Out Girls and any, anything I, I've had to write, whether it be stand up or or anything, is just the characters around me. I think that's something that uh, we've done as a family. You know, me and my sisters will always sort of like reenact um, characters, either from our family. We've obviously had some very colourful and wonderful characters so we'll mimic them you know we still do now doing impressions all the time um so yeah I think um just just the wonder a lot of women a lot of women yeah. I grew up a, around a lot of women um mainly women <laughs> um, I'm one of four girls I'm yeah one... wow that's quite quite a big big family of girls isn't yeah. it whereabouts is this we talked about in Kent, in Kent yeah, yeah. And my dad died quite when I was quite young, so it was very, you know, bonded. And my mum was quite close to two of her sisters. Um, Yes, I did do a pitch which was kind of uh, inspired, let's say, by me living at one point on the street where, like, there was my two aunties and my mum and just what characters they were, you know. um, One was very glamorous and um everything had to be perfect plastic still left on the sofa you know that kind of thing literally a whole bungalow was white inside all furniture was white and then my other auntie who was you know you couldn't find a seat it was so much mess (laughs) so I, i sort of did this pitch about um yeah somebody still living at home later in life which i know has sort of been done before but i was sort of concentrating more on the sort of living with all these women more yeah and i don't think people have really seen that before i think that sort of multi-generational all women kind of um concept is something that people haven't seen so i think my aim was not that i think we've we've sort of seen ones where it's like oh forced to go back home but actually she quite liked living back home she quite (laughs) liked it you know there's a lot of benefits you know getting looked after and um, getting your washing done and all that yeah she's sort of (laughs) trying to get these jobs and she'd get these for a little bit but um the, it all sort of almost always end on an episode where it she's sort of like oh but you know this is nice isn't it you know um and i guess yeah she had a lot of attention from these three amazing women and stuff but 
So yeah, yeah, subconsciously, I guess, like family's been a really big creative influence for you um, in terms of like subject matter and things. But are there any other kind of things that you come to mind that have really inspired you in terms of how you write or how you perform? No. <laughs> or me. <laughs> I've never really, that's good that you said that because I've never really, yeah, thought that it has been family. Obviously doing Give Out Girls was, you know, work. It was. Mm, yeah influence was being put in a situation I didn't want to be in <laughs> because at the end of the day you get some cushy jobs but generally you hate doing promo you promo you're stuck in the cold and you're having to hand out stuff a lot of the time or leaflets which is the worst one no one wants to take a leaflet no one ever wakes up and says oh I hope someone leaflets me today um so <laughs> the inspiration coming from desperation I guess of not wanting to be in that situation but um and I mean like in terms of when you're when you're writing or writing stand-up where do you have any like tips or tricks that you go to um when you're sort of stuck for a sort of writing a joke or putting a bit of a piece together is there anything you you use regularly no my I was thinking about this and my dream place to be able to write for e for for anything really would be on a train <laughs> I don't know why but um and I've, I've I've never done it, but I know a comedian. I think his name's Kieran Kieran Hodginson. I think his name is, and he talks about taking a train trip, just like a really long train trip, and then coming all the way back again. And I was like, oh, I'd love to do that, because I don't know why, but I'll often when I used to go on trains, um, <laughs> I don't so much now. Uh, I, that's where I get the ideas. I think you just, you know, you're not distracted by the kitchen or the, if you're, you know, and I know there's people around you, but I don't know. There's something about being on a train, which is obviously good when you're going to a gig because a lot of the time you're traveling on the train. But um, yeah, so for, for sort of like ideas, um, so tricks. Well, you see, I haven't had to worry about tricks for a long time because I'm a mum of two now and so my time is precious. So um, when I get like an hour or so to write, you know, I touch wood. I, it's just like it's all waiting to come yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. I don't have that sort of writer's block for a long time. Yeah. Because most of the time now what I have to do is... If I get an idea, if I get an idea, the classic, just write it down. Yeah, yeah. You're going to forget it later. It's, um, <laughs> I've done that a few times. Um, so I'll write it in my phone or um, I used to do the thing pre-kids. I used to have a notepad pad by the bed. And, you know, so if anything was on my head, in my mind, write it down. But yeah, tricks. I guess in the old days when I didn't have the kids and I would struggle, I did I did do a bit of which was inspired from the old artist way, which I'm sure. Yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, Julia Cameron and which was the the morning papers. I think she calls it where just, just write, just write, 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 write. Don't censor it. And I think whenever I have got stuck, um, just before, um, no, it wasn't just before it was after lockdown of 2020 around sort of may time i i was like because my husband he writes as well and he was having a few ideas and i thought wait a minute i've not got any ideas <laughs> where are my ideas i got to <laughs> yeah i got to, well we me and him wrote a sitcom together um which got options but didn't go any further sadly um and uh so i and then suddenly i got yeah i got two Id ideas but i didn't really know where i was going with it so sort of using the artist way method i was kind of like oh just write rather than trying to plot out the scenes or whatever and it was sort of a love story and i've never really written a love story and i really I really fancied the idea of writing a love story and so something i still want to make and it's sort of set in lockdown I know it's not very original at the moment. No, that's, you know, I think there's a lot of interesting things that have happened this year yeah, exactly. that have yet, yet to be, you know, depicted in art. So I think there'll be lots the of appetite for it. Two people that, you know, they can't get together. It's very romantic. So, 
Yeah, so I just thought, oh, because I, I, some, I, my brain sometimes feels overwhelmed, you know, when you just think, mm. ah, I want to get it all down, but I don't know where to start. And then you just, so I just tried to do a stream of just like, this is probably a weird way to work for anyone else, but I would just literally think of a line that she might say, and then I just go with it. And then it that might, and just keep writing. Like, it, so if anyone doesn't know, the artist way, she talks about, she calls it, calls it the morning papers. And um, one of the exercises, I think she gets you to do so many exercises if you do the course. So it's a course in the book. But every day you have to do the morning papers, which is literally you can sit there and go, hello, I don't know what to say, but I'm going to keep talking and I'm just hungry. And I'm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the and idea is you just write and it, your subconscious just keeps you going, isn't it? You know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I sort of try to do that sometimes if I'm like, I don't know where to start. I don't know if that's a correct way of doing it. Well, but, it sounds like a good way to do it to me, so. Yeah, when me and Tony were sort of writing some, you know, a new episode of the sitcom, that's pretty much what we were doing sometimes. We'd sit down and go, right, let's just talk about it. Let's just talk about it. And, you know, you'd say, oh, well, I want this episode, you know, I think this episode should be about, I don't know, they're at a hair show. And and then we just, I talk about funny stories of things that happen at different uh, beauty shows that I've been at. And then, yeah. And then you just go, a lot with that was just like, I'd say a line. Mm. And, um, the, you know, it's like opening a box, isn't it, your mind? Mm. It's just, uh, that's how it works. But I, I think I'm that actor writer, as they call it, rather than a writer writer. <laughs> Yeah, and with the stand up, one of the projects I love that you you run is Screaming with Laughter. You want to like tell tell us a little bit more about that? No, so Screaming with Laughter is a. I think I've had it about three, four years now. I took it over from Lucy Porter, who actually started it. She started it right back in two thousand and eleven, but was very small with it. She just she she took it on so she could carry on gigging and and take her babies to work, as she would say. So the idea is it's just a normal comedy club, um, but in the day, um, parents can bring their babies. They don't have to, or people can come alone if they want to, but they just have to be prepared that there will probably be a baby crying um, and somebody breastfeeding. Um, and yeah, so it's 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 actually quite a tough gig. I won't <laughs> lie to you. And people, yeah. even now, after three, four years, uh, you can Google a bo- uh, blog I wrote about it. <laughs> um, and some comedians can't do it. Some of the best comedians can't do it because you're in the day, so people will not have much to drink. I mean, there yeah. are mums there with the bottle of Prosecco and uh, going for it. But, of course, it's at one o'clock and yeah. everyone's sober and they're distracted and they're tired. So it takes a lot to get them laughing but they're having a good time they always yeah. come up to me and say you know oh i love that it's such a good time it's so nice to get out and do something that's for me and it's not just for the baby um so it's one of those that at the time you don't get a payoff but uh, i always say to the anyone new who's coming on i say you know they are enjoying it if it's a bit quiet i go it's a bit like doing edinburgh sometimes <laughs> Yeah, you're never sure what the reaction's going to be on any particular night. You yeah, know, it's like it can just be really quiet, but they are loving it. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so I host that, and we have various venues um, in uh, Bedford at uh, the Bedford in Ballam, and we did have one in North London, but I don't know if that'll be up and running again uh, when this comes out. Um, yeah, so That's cool. So what um what other projects have you got on uh, the horizon? Well, um, I have my podcast. Mm-hmm. The podcast came out of, as I say, I love love radio. It, in some ways, sometimes I think if a if a magic wizard, oh, wizard came down and said, "What's what would you what would you most like to do if you had cut everything?" I do sometimes think it'd be radio. I just yeah. love it. It's what I um first went into before stand-up i did like a little radio and journalism course after uni just because i love a course joe i love doing a course. <laughs> learning it's good <laughs> yeah and just meeting people and chatting and whatever and being creative and so i and d- worked at bbc london for years and that's where i learned a lot so i'm old, old school radio in that way um 
so I did that for years then I went on to Resonance and then now I do a show on Soho Radio but I also make that into a podcast which is for, called Funny Mummies but on Soho Radio it's called The Other Woman which is part of a collective of different women yeah. Uh, yeah. that do a show every Thursday my one is uh, Comedian Mums and theirs are all music I, I'm like the non-call one on there but <laughs> <laughs> about uh, that. so that's called Funny Mummies and it's going quite well and I just talk to amazing uh, comedian mums really cool. we've had Sarah Barron Jessica Foscue of course you know they're all starting to pop one out before <laughs> <laughs> things dry up I don't know. that's the criteria for coming on your show you yeah need to pop well, one out <laughs> we are we're getting to that stage now where we're like oh we're looking at different like we're thinking oh we're gonna do a series on aunties so we're gonna, <laughs> because we get to that stage where we're like I think we might have gone through all the mums uh <laughs> So, yeah, but on the horizon, just trying to push push that more and because um, it's uh, getting getting more and more popular and just want to, I want to make money from it, Joe, I'll be honest. Yeah. And, good. <laughs> and, good. and I was in 2020 just starting to work on a new hour um, called Dig Deep and then it got halted. And so hopefully in 2020, 2021, I'll be... Um, sort of showing that in some way whether it be streaming it i don't know but um yeah still not quite sure what that's about but obviously, interesting obviously so, deep in some way that we <laughs> definitely all had to do this year. it's not a gardening program then no <laughs> <laughs> uh, sorry to be facetious <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's an angle isn't it maybe i'll just have me at the beginning just digging Live gardening, but talking about deep subjects. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. Oh, thanks, I'll take that. <laughs> so You can have that one for free. Anyway, um, Hattie, as always, I'm always really excited to see what you're going to do next because it's always fun and it's always um, great to talk to you because you've always got Thank lots you. of cool stuff to say. So thanks so much for doing this. I really, really appreciate it. I love Ellie. it, I love it. Cool. Thanks, love, and I'll let you get on with your day. Thank um, you. Yeah. Thank you for having me. That's all right. Bye. Bye.